All right, so let's go ahead and define these guys. On page eight, we have the simple random sample. Okay, so remember what we did with the rectangles. The simple random sample was where we had all 100 rectangles and we randomly selected five of them. Okay, so a simple random sample. Here's the, here's the definition. The all, the key to this is that all samples of a given size have an equal chance because everything is just all together and you have an equal chance of getting every single thing. So therefore, every single possible sample has an equal chance of being chosen. You could have gotten five small rectangles as easily as you could have gotten five large rectangles. So there's some issues here if there's a trait you need to control. The, um, if you don't need to control that and it's just okay, whatever mix you get, then a simple random sample is good. Okay, so an advantage is that the bias is reduced. And I want you to put something in here though, because remember how yesterday I talked about the word group, just saying group these things is not specific enough. It's gonna go on my statistics dirty word wall when I get that going. What things do you need when you're grouping to call them instead of groups, we need to call them cluster, cluster or strata. strata, whichever method you used and whichever qualities those have. But bias in this case, is reduced here's the next dirty word the thing that's going to go on my stats dirty word wall you cannot say so do not do not say ever do not ever say that you eliminate bias you can't ever guarantee that you have eliminated all the bias so that's something that you need to watch out for just always say bias random randomization reduces bias. Okay, and part of a song that I have is random eyes to reduce bias, reduce bias, random eyes to reduce bias. And we'll use that more in chapter 13, that song, so I won't sing it all for you now because it's got some other things in it. Now, um, com when we get into chapter 13, the quickest and easiest way to say do a random simple random sample is to say Put all the subjects in a big bag. And so I'm talking about this little situation here. Put all the subjects in a big bag. Shake well. Shake well is indicating to the grader or the reader or the AP person that this is how you are indicating that you are randomizing. Okay, so that's an, it has to be in there. It's a conscious statement saying, I'm telling you, this is randomized. So you put everything in a big bag, randomize it, and pull out whatever it is that you need to pull out. So several years ago, there was a problem on the AP exam free response about 300 dogs, and you were putting them into various treatment groups. And so guess what? It was perfectly fine to say on the AP test, you're going to um, put all 300 dogs into a big bag, shake well, and pull out 100 dogs to go into that treatment, and 100 dogs to go in the second treatment, and the third, last 100 to go in the third treatment. And that's fine, because you get the point. They understand that you understand um, the process of a simple random sample. Now, you'd probably put their names in the bag or something, but anyway, you know, gives them a little bit of comic <coughs> relief as they're grading, tons and tons of papers. All right, disadvantages to a simple random sample. It could be time consuming if it's huge amounts of data, lots of labor for that huge amounts of data. But I think here's probably something that is um, uh, more cautious to guard against. If all samples are equally likely to happen, then guess what? Some samples may not be representative of the population. For example, if every sample is equally possible, what happens if I get a sample of five teeny tiny rectangles, okay? Or five of the largest rectangles, see? So simple random sample can be dangerous in that regard. All right, clustering and stratifying. So those two here, we got clustering, divide into the cluster. So we're dividing in groups that we call, clusters is what we call them, but the quality of them is that each cluster is supposed to be a mini population. So you're hoping each cluster is representative of the population. And so then once you pick a cluster randomly, then you must sample all of it. That's the key. You sample all of it. You actually could pick more than one cluster if you wanted to. You don't have to just pick one cluster. All right, advantage, it's quick, easy, it's cheap, easy to do, easy to uh, take care of. Here's a possible disadvantage. What happens if that randomly chosen cluster may not be representative of the population? We had that happen on our rectangles. Anybody remember which cluster was unusual? 
on our rectangles, page five from yesterday. Anybody get, did anybody get uh, cluster one. number one? Cluster number one had an had a area of 4.42 and all the other ones were around eight. Why was it so unusual? Because that cluster had a whole lot of what? Ones. ones in it. And it brought that average down. So we had a 20% chance yesterday of getting an unrepresentative cluster. Okay, so that's the danger with clustering. All right, stratified sample. We divide into groups, and the groups, we call them strata. The quality of the groups is that they all what? They have a common trait. In our case of the rectangles, the common trait was their size. And it was important. Size was the trait that we should have controlled because size was what we were ultimately measuring. If color is we want to get a representative color sample, then we should um, control the trait color to make sure we get one of, or some of each kind of color. So these are called homogeneous groups. You randomly select one or more. I don't have to just pick one from each strata. They're fairly easy to, do, to divide up. Guarantees that you will get all of the types you are trying to get. So if you need to control a trait to guarantee you get all kinds, you should stratify. All right, now, it may be different to decide how to stratify. You know, should I stratify by the color of the item? Should I stratify by the um, size of the items? And, or should I stratify by the, the age of the items? You know, various things. And that's per problem. You just gotta look at the problem. What is the trait I need to control so that I make sure I get one of each kind? All right, and so I have a song that will help you um, differentiate between clustering and um, the stratifying because those are the two most commonly mixed up uh, sampling systems. So we're gonna take a moment and take a look. So to our systematic sampling, I like this one because this one is uh, definite, not confused with another method, it's easily identifiable, but where does randomness come into play on this? Where does, where, yep. You randomly select that first item, and since you randomly select that first item, that's where randomness comes into play here. And then you choose every nth one after that, every 20th one, whatever, every eighth one. It's very simple to take, very organized, systematic. Now, here is one um, way that this could be bad. There could be hidden periodic traits. And this is a poor scan, just the way the computer scanned it. These are actually, there's three different colors here, by the way. And they're supposed to be different, but they just scanned non-differently. Okay, so let's pretend like this is on the board and I'm not looking at it. So I don't know what's on the board. Somebody, I have my eyes closed. Somebody says, I want you to take a sample and then tell me what color I've put on the board or colors. Color or colors I've put on the board. Okay, so then I take some, I point to it or whatever. And the one I choose first is that one. I pointed to it and that's the, where my finger was. And then um, she says, okay, then I'm gonna like move along every six inches and start over, you know, every whatever. So, so I'm gonna take a systematic sample. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I'm gonna hit another one and I'm gonna tell you what color that is. And I'm gonna listen and then I'll decide what color's on the board. So here she goes. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's blue. And I think, okay, cool. And then here's the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's blue. And here's the next one. You get the picture. Four, five, six. Oh, the next sample piece item you picked was blue. So what does my brain think is on the board? Only blue. Only blue. When there was other colors on the board, but it was a hidden tr cyclical trait, and I just happened to have a pick on that cycle's size. So I got the same thing every single time, even though there was actually different ones involved. Okay? All right, I hope that makes sense. That's been the only way I've been able to come up with a um, concrete way to demonstrate that. All right, the last one, well, not the last one, but close to the last one, multi-stage. Multi-stage just means there's more than one of these methods used. Here's a good, uh, here's a good uh, school example, and that's our advisory classes, because you know what they do? They print out the 10th grade list, and then they print out the 11th grade list, and they print out the 12th grade list. So the lists are homogeneous groups. What's that? That's stratifying, they're all the same. So first, they stratified by grade. 
And then they took one of those strata and they did something to that. They clustered it with the alphabet. Like, so they had it all lined as alphabetical list, and then they, like, did the next 25, and then drew a line. Okay, those go to so-and-so's advisory. And then they picked the next 25, and then they go to that one. And so those were clusters that they had done uh, alphabetically. You know, and, and honestly speaking, this uh, method probably is a pretty nice varied group, don't you think? In your advisory, you have a good mixture of academic different um, people and um, different um, electives type people and you know so you probably get a good different mixture the with one exception and that one exception is what the grade so I wouldn't want to pick a 10th grade advisory and expect that to represent Alito High School because um, you know that's I don't I'm, not, I'm discounting the 11th and 12th graders yep Didn't you see that was um, all stratified though because it's same age and then also same last name You said they're interchangeable, right. so it could be clustered or But I think, oh, I see. Hmm. Yeah. Like academic or um, mm -hmm. last name. I agreed. That's a good point. I think it depends on what you're asking for. You, If you were saying um, they're stratified because they have similar last names, but if the question I was going to be asking and surveying them was something like a school-related opinion, that I needed people of all walks of life in Alito High School, which is what I'm going for, then I'm kind of expecting that each one of these is a little mini population. And if each one of these is really more like a, li li a mini population and that's really kind of more what I was going for, then I would call them clusters, okay? But I can see what you're saying there. All right, and finally, it's on the side here, hard to read, but a census is another sampling method. Um, and let's see why okay so I have a little smiley face here on the side because it's representative why is a census representative because the sample actually what is the population yeah if the sample is the population then I would certainly hope that it's it's accurate okay so now that's an advantage that it's representative but what is it and here's a sad face I draw here for disadvantage so the sad face that it, for disadvantage is that it's very what? Time consuming for sure. You know the census in the United States takes almost the whole year to complete. Furthermore, it's very expensive. Do you know that if you're president during that time that the um, census is going on, you get a little, you get a little brownie points because it looks like the unemployment rate has gone down. You know why it looks like the unemployment rate's gone down? Because government hired so many people to be involved in the census situation that it actually affected that there okay um, it can be extremely cumbersome and you know one thing to be consider to consider overall there's going to be some inaccuracies it probably won't be a whole lot like um, for example when the lady um, that did the rectangle activity she got the average of all 100 rectangles she said it was 7.42 I tried to do it myself and I got that it was 7.49. So close, but a little inaccuracy. So you could have a little bit of inaccurate results with the um, census. Okay, so that is the finish, the done of the, um, hello, that's the finish of the different sampling methods that we could have as good, bad, and their advantages and disadvantages. Okay, so we're done. We're gonna go on then to our chapter 12 notes on the next page, page nine.